Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's a bit late in the season, and we we're so busy doing the shows that we perhaps don't get to do this uh, video when we'd like to, which is in the middle of the National Kent Essex sort of period of showing. So we do the five shows in in 14 days, and we're on the go pretty much all that time. So this is a couple of days after three days after the Surrey show, and uh, we're finished for the season and we'll have a look around the pot, the new varieties and uh, everything in general. We'll have a little chat about varieties at the end. We normally have a subject where we discuss things at the end and I thought the varieties one should grow if you're growing for garden, if you're growing for cut flower or if you're growing for exhibition. Just a few ideas for people that perhaps are not experienced in picking what they should grow. Okay, we're going to make it. Right, this is the bed of varieties that I've grown in the past that I liked and I've grown again. And uh, we're going through those and I've got two beds of varieties I'm growing for the first time. So we're going to start off with an Australian variety from John Rowe in Australia. It's called Warraview Elusive. I'm not sure it'll ever make it big on the show bench, but I grew it last year and it was nice. And uh, it's a good variety. We go on now to uh, Blight, uh, Blight and Burnt Orange. Didn't seem to hold a centre as you can see there, it, and it's trying to spot. And uh, I think Liz is, Les uh, Stothard, the razor, uh, has given up on it really. And uh, But I put a plant in, two plants in, just to see if it would uh, make it. And that's those two. Uh, on this one, this is this time, it's raised by uh, Tom Cleghorn in Scotland, Fife in uh, Kopur is the place he lives, and it's uh, Fife in Scotland. And I've, he was sent as a miniature ball, and I grew it as a miniature ball, but it was on the small side. So I've grown it again with lots and lots of blooms on it, and it, I've turned it into a large pom. And uh, it is a large pom, let's find one with it that's fairly in good form like that one and it does go back and there's my ring nice and handy um, and it, it is a large pom if you grow enough on it but it will never make top size for a miniature ball and sometimes when they're unclassified and they're sent to me I have my own sort of thoughts on it and uh, I thought at the time I thought I try it as a large pom it goes right back on the stem it's a nice colour would need shading but it does bleach uh, would need shading for show work, but uh, that will be its future uh, for me, a large pom. Uh, this is from John Rowe in Australia, Warraview he lives, and that's his prefix. And this is Warraview Kalulu. And it's smaller than what it was last year, but it's a crisper form. We were talking between ourselves before we made the video, and it's really a likeable flower, isn't it, now? Yeah, yeah. sharper than it was sharper last year. Sharper than what it was last year. Uh, but late to flower this year, I've got two plants, and these are the first three blooms, and the other three blooms are yet to come, so it's going to be October flower, some of these. So that's Warraview Kalulu from John Rowe in Australia. Uh, this is from, uh, uh, from Tom Cleghorn again, it's called Eye Catcher. It, it's on the uh, Halls of Heaven's list. Eye Candy. Eye Candy. And um, it's a pale pink uh, miniature deck, Strong stems, tall growing, and that's called eye candy from uh, Tom Cleghorn. Um, shall we do this one yeah. from this side? This was another brainwave of mine. It, I was sent a plant, I was given a plant by Robert Reed of one called uh, 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 Holly Hill Miss White. And it was uh, a miniature ball, but it was too small to be a miniature ball. So I'd done the same thing again, and I decided to look, have a look at it as a large pom and uh, it goes right back on the stem uh, it reminds me of one called Bob Finch which I grew when I was a young boy and uh, it's on the lines of Dave's Choice sort of form and shape but it is a large pom and by growing lots and lots on it you get it down to large pom size and I grow double stopped it and I allowed lots of flowers on it probably as many as about 15 or 16 flowers, perhaps more, and uh, most of them do go through the ring. And, and it closes back sort of uh, near, near where it's at perfection. So that bloom there with a heavier centre would be dressed back uh, later. And it's called 
Holly Hill Miss White and the Holly Hills are raised by Ted Kennedy in America and it's a nice variety as that. I've grown this for several years and I think the stock is perhaps not what it should be. It's from Kengri in a way and it's called ACZ, Z-E-D. And it's low growing, quite a pleasant flower, but probably uh, this will be the last time I'll grow it. And this is nearly flowered out now, but it's called uh, uh, Blight and Dolly and it's raised by Les Stothard. I don't think he's going to persevere with it, but I put a, a plant in, a couple of plants in, just to have a look at it. This one is called Corabel uh, Cor Bob, and it, it comes from Australia, raised by the Wedd family in uh, New South Wales. It's a small town uh, that they live in called Corabel. And I've had blooms that go giant size, um, and I think it could make, it, it was sent as a large, uh, and it is a large probably, but I'm sure a giant grower could push that up to be a giant. And the, the blooms have been about 10 and a half, 11 inches, but the sun has really bleached it. The early blooms were much more attractive and held the color much better. But now I don't put covers up. I couldn't really, uh, I couldn't really uh, cover it. So I haven't seen it at its best. Uh, going back to the bed where we grew them for the second time, uh, this is one that's called Ellie's Pride. Uh, it was good last year and it's good again this year. Uh, it's a large deck, but I've had the odd one that's going up near the giant uh, ring, so uh, the large ring. And getting so, near semi cactus as well. So. Yeah, it is a bit. It is a bit this, more so than last year. Uh, but that's got to be a bigger bloom with that heavy centre now and it's only just goes through the ring by an inch now when you put the ring over it. So it might go large, that bloom. Um, but as you say, Dave, it is more uh, in betweeny mm. than uh, before. We're talking about the form of it where you have the broader petals on a deck and the fi finer petals on a semi cactus and it could go either way last right? year it weren't far off of amari gold was it in no its, that's its right form it looks like an amari gold seedling actually where, when it was coming up mm. it had all the habit of a amari gold and it was originally re raised by gearlings in holland uh, many years ago and uh, reintroduced i think right these are this is really the uh, tom cleghorn uh, bed from here onwards down to the end and he sent me those to try some have got names and some haven't. This is called Highbrow. Uh, it's not really an exhibition dahlia, it's more of a cut flower dahlia, and it quills quite a lot. And for show work, it's not the fashion to have quilled blooms, it's more reflexing type blooms without the quilling. And that's Highbrow. Uh, just got two plants of that, but different numbers of each one. Uh, this was probably the best one, it's called Ginger. And my friend here judged a class at Essex and I had a bloom of uh, just as if he was awake really and it was one of the days when he was awake because he said to me what's this ginger then? I said oh it's a new one. I said I'm glad you spotted it <laughs> and uh, we both agreed it's quite nice uh, as a miniature deck, orange, raised by Tom Claghorn as I said before and I think that would be one of the better ones for me, one of the ones that possibly has got a future on the market and it's called uh, ginger nothing else no prefix just ginger and that will be a deck miniature deck i would say uh, this one is seville uh, as in the place in spain the town in spain and uh, got uh, three plants of that two of ginger three of seville he just sent me what he had really and um, i like that that's quite a pleasant one the problem would be that it'd probably go small deck rather than miniature deck. If it was a miniature deck, it's a bit heavy, chunky in its form. If you look underneath it and then you look at ginger, how, how fine ginger is as a proper miniature deck. This is quite heavy and it would need to be grown as a small deck, I think. And uh, you, I've got nine on it, uh, on that plant and you would want it six up to get some size into it. I've got three plants of that, Seville. Uh, we're missing this side, aren't we? Uh, this got flooded a little bit down the middle, uh, but this is Happy Triumph, which was very good as a, a medium deck last year from Hasselhofer in Australia. 
and uh, it just got flooded with the pipes letting too much water through and it tended to, to hit the middle of the bed only and the rest fine. So we did uh, did that we did, yeah. uh, this time and uh, we're going to do Nadia Ruth which is a uh, fim, medium fim. Uh, this was going to be my uh, fit only fim of the year, but I couldn't get enough cuttings and enough plants. But I really do like it. It's got great depth, lovely colour, comes out whitish, and then goes pinker and pinker. And this old bloom is really pink now. And um, I'll grow it next year as my fim because I wasn't happy with Normandy Delight and Pelt and uh, quality on the year. This one is probably the only miss of these, I'd say probably won't make it. it it's not been named yet it's just on a seedling number and it's uh, x14 stroke 8 and uh, it's a small deck white grows six up he's told me i write it on the label so that uh, i know how the razor wants me to grow it and then the first year i'll grow what the late razor said and then the second year i'll grow what i think if, if it isn't what the razor told me to do. But it didn't have the form really, if you take a picture of that day. It hasn't really got show bench form, you know, and I think that would be the only one that I would say I wouldn't uh, want to grow again. This one, um, uh, he hasn't named it yet, but if I was to name it, I'd call it Reach for the Sky, because I had it seven or eight foot tall. Uh, it's a small bowl. Uh, it dresses right back, as you can see on the picture there. The scent is just hanging on on this bloom, so it doesn't mark. A lot of dahlias this year have been marking prematurely, but this one is very good. And as I say, it's uh, still on the number. What's the number of this one? This is uh, 13. EX13 stroke 21, uh, small ball white. And it, that's what it is. A good size, small ball, white, doesn't mark, no marking. Everything's marking around here this year. Um, but the downside of it, and I've got to criticise them, you know, as I see it, the centre doesn't hold for long. Can't criticise it for anything else, but you've got about two days, it's just going now. But you, what I would say, it's lovely and fresh at the back, isn't yeah. it? So, yeah. and not a lot of a mark. So that one is a seedling from Teg, Tom Cleghorn. They, all those were from Tom Cleghorn. We've done, uh, we've done uh, happy. Uh, Holly Hill Miss White, um, we've done Dolly, a row of new varieties, these are all ones that were sent to me for the first time. This was sent by Gordon Hodgson on behalf of Kenny Shaw, it's called Christine Laidler and uh, very attractive, I'm told it's a seedling from Western, um, which one was it? Ella Grace. Ella Grace and um, very attractive, goes back on the stem. Um, not not just a cut flower daily, this is a show dahlia. Good form, good centre. The the colours are fairly even on all the blooms, that's an older bloom. But this is how you would want it for show. With a good centre, two thirds depth, going right back on the stem. You don't have to do that with a miniature deck, but this one does and that's a bonus. So that is Christine Laidler from Kenny Shaw got a couple coming up here now from uh, Graham Johnson um, and this one had terrible centers like that on all the blooms early on and it's obviously got a problem and I doubt if I'd grow it again not this one these other ones better but this is Tweller uh, I'm trying to think of the prefix Ash John Ash John Tweller Twyella and uh, I've got a couple of nice blooms now. Um, that's nice. That's nice. And it's a seedling from Twilight Boy, the purple Twilight Boy. Um, fades a little bit at the back. See, I haven't got covers up, so people that are serious growers may well cover things like this, and then they'd have a better cover. But that, that's how it can be, and that's how I've had it earlier on, and it was a bit gross, the earlier blooms. And even now, you know, this is a later bloom. So I don't know if it's got the consistency um, to make it. Um, but the other one I like better. This is honeycomb. This is uh, Ash John honeycomb. And I've had some nice blooms on here. It's probably a miniature. It's probably a miniature deck, I'd say. It's a close one, though, isn't it? Bold deck. What would you say? 
it's a yeah, ball line. I'd say it isn't pointy, so I'd say it's more ball. Mm, it's ball close. shaped. Yeah, it's by yeah. They're on the miniature decks are yeah. ball shaped these days, aren't they? Though when you think back to Karen Glenn, real yeah. decks. Um, but quite blunt. Quite, quite, quite. Yeah, quite, quite pleasant, and I like it. It's called Ash John Honeycomb. That one. Now this this was sent to me as a variety called Josephine, Asquith Josephine, the white. He had a yellow spot off of it, and this is yellow Josephine. That's the story. Now the truth is that yellows never, or, or whites never throw yellow. So Asquith Josephine has has thrown a yellow. But if you go back in history, you go back to clients did Kirkred, White Kirkred, up to the future, uh, Winholm Diane, Tracy Diane, you go to um, all the varieties we've got. Uh, moonlights. Moonlights, Eastwood Moonlight, White Moonlight, Rustic, White Rustic, uh, Charlie 2, White Charlie 2. And I think what we've got here is Charlie 2, and white Charlie too. It's just it's good stock. It's just the water that there was laying there, um, and that's what I think. Uh, but unfortunately, I've never grown Asquith Josephine. It's up to David Hall, who does grow uh, Asquith Josephine and has got this sport to identify what it is. But I'll be quite happy to say that that is Charlie too. And that is White Charlie too. And a lady many years ago, Eileen T uh, Kimbig from the Isle of Man, phoned me up and said, I've got one of my plants of Charlie too uh, that you sent me turn white. And I said, all of it, all the blooms are white. She said, yes. I said, send me the tuber and I'll see what I can do. And we released it two years later and she'd done well out of it and I'd done okay. And uh, that was the introduction of White uh, Charlie too. And this is the original Charlie too, and unfortunately, I think that's what we've got here. And um, we're going to go round and see, uh, but Les Stothard, when he sent his seedlings, Les is blooming uh, really in June and July, and he phoned me up and said, "This white gold, this bright and white gold," he said, "it's really good." So I had one plant that he sent me. And I've done a Jesus and the Fishes in May, and I ended up with seven plants of it. And I planted them all, and I've dug up some of his others. And they tell me there's a really good purple one at the trials, and I'll probably dug it up and dumped it to get this in. And his problem is the centre. I mean, that is a perfect bloom, really good small deck, um, but you can't quite get the centre. It starts off with a big centre like that. It continues with a big centre, like that. It gradually goes when it gets to that sort of stage. And then you've got a bloom like this here that is dying at the back, and look at it. So the centre actually kills it for show work. If you grow in the garden, nothing wrong with that, no problem. You show a green centre like that and they will hammer you out of sight. So unfortunately it's a miss, and he realised later and said to me, it's not going to make it. And I said, thanks very much, I've got seven of it now, and I've dug all your others up. And, um, but he has got a good one down here that you'll see in a minute. Uh, most of the ones from uh, Australia, from John Rowe, were a little disappointing. I'm not, I don't like being unkind to anyone, but by English standards, um, that could make it, the, although the colouring is a bit bizarre, um, but it was brighter earlier. This is War of You, Little Princess. Um, not only does it swirl a bit, but it's a bit big. The early blooms are enormous, and it doesn't really have the form. This is a younger bloom, not up to show level yet. But look, look at the swinging and the swirling of it, really. And um, we've got to do better with that, John. We've got to do better. Um, but that is Ash. Uh, that is uh, War of You, Little Princess. I've seen pictures of this next variety. It's called uh, Devon. Devon Apache, Ooh, uh, and <laughs> did that, uh, I've done it a second time, it's still hanging on. Um, <laughs> Devon Apache, uh, but the plant, Dave, if you get back at the plant, I had, two, I had three of it, I had three plants of it, I had to pull these up, they were so, you know, virus really, 
and this is the third one and I, I wanted to see it and we're going to see it now in my button hole um, um, and that is Devon Apache and um, I'm not going to see it now am I? there's a full bloom but I've got a picture of that John did show me uh, send me a picture of that and that's got potential that is a good medium deck but not that bloom <laughs> Anyway, don't worry about that. <laughs> so we're going to go on to another Devon. Uh, this is Devon Radiance, uh, which was a large stroke possible medium deck. And I've had some nice blooms on this. That's one's three quarters open. And it's a good medium deck, that. I like that. And um, they're just going over now. I had uh, two, uh, whatever, one, two, two plants of that. Three plants of that. Probably this another one that need, needs a bit of cover. For it would shade. Sun. It yeah. needs shading, yeah. Yeah. Um, right, uh, on to the more Australian ones. This is Pale Face, Warraview Pale Face. And again, there's a medium deck. It would, I tried to ring over it earlier and uh, it, it wouldn't go through the small ring, right over, about a half inch over the small ring. So it would be a medium deck. But when you look at the form of Western Harry or Mary Margaret Rowe and the class act in yellows, medium decks in this country, I don't think that one would have a future. And I had one called Glorious, War of You Glorious, where you were standing, Dave, and uh, I had to pull them up because they weren't very healthy. So it is hard for the Australian varieties to break into our sort of level. What's this one? That's it. Um, done that. Yeah, that's the same one. That's the small ball. This is the same one we saw on the other side. And it's got no name, but if I was to name it, I'd call it Reach for the Sky because I've had it eight, eight foot high, seven foot high. It is really a tall grower. I've cut down a bit now. And on to the best of what Les sent me, Les Stothard, and this is a really good variety. It's a miniature bowl. It's called Ermine, Blight and Ermine. And uh, it's what we want when I talk about um, miniature petal. This is min built in miniature petal. You can have a miniature size bloom, whether it be a ball or a deck, but it can be a too big a petal for the actual section. This is what you want in a miniature ball. And I would argue sometimes with Mary's Jamanda and Jamanda, they've got too big a petal to be miniatures, but they are miniatures and they're the standard that we show it. But I find varieties like this have got four more class, as long as they dress back like they do, and uh, Liz, uh, Les was so frightened that it was going to go over size that he said grow everything up on it and I did but I think I would go about 12 next year but I probably got a bit more than that on these plants and that's the white uh, miniature uh, small deck and then we've got four plants of Blight Nermin and uh, Dave's got them there and um, it lasts a long time as well and it goes right back early so you've got an half open bloom there and, and it's almost mm. ready to go isn't yeah, it? There, isn't so it? It's quite sweet isn't it? It's a sweet little thing yeah but I wouldn't grow everything up on it I'd grow a, a restricted number like we do on everything else I'd grow perhaps you know maybe 12 to 14 something like that mm. um, but he was frightened that it was going to be too big and it would be a, a small ball small small ball or big miniature so I think by growing it restrictedly but it is a really sweet form really sweet form and that's called Blight Nermin from uh, Les Stockard okay this is uh, the bed of uh, Val's White Candy bit of uh, in and out health with them but I've got some nice clean plants like these are and I would say for us southerners it's probably the medium semi cactus to grow at the present time a lot of the boys are trying to moonlight perhaps next year but uh, I've done well with this at the shows uh, a few of them went virused early and I filled them in with uh, uh, with uh, Casper never look at them. a couple of decent blooms down here today with, with Casper this is AC Casper from uh, from America uh, from uh, Greenaway in America and uh, that's AC Casper which is uh, could be it's unclassified here so it could be a medium deck or a large deck but we've grown it four up uh, as a large deck 
and uh, there have been some really large size blooms on it it's been a 10 inch large and uh, I've got three plants down the full bed of it you'll see in a moment uh, he's going back to white vows candy of the form it should be mm -hmm. um, it's not a massive bloom but lovely form lovely center two-thirds depth goes right back onto the stem and uh, it's a workman uh, but there is on the hillcrest candy and Vowell's candy you've got to watch the stock they are prone to break down and it is a problem and I've had some breaking down I've marked some my little system as you know is to mark plants that are clean with a twist tie at the front uh, like I have with this uh, Casper it's been one of my nicest clean plants and I put a twist tie at the front and then if I get a plant where it's not so healthy like this one with uh, with uh, white bells candy I put a twist tie at the back and then when you dig the tubers you, well, why have I marked this one well you can see the veining uh, and the lack of poor health it's probably a bit shorter than some of the others so I don't want to be propagating from that uh, I might show blooms off of it like the bloom you just saw it's a good bloom but I won't keep that tuber or that tuber uh, and then you'll get others like that tuber I think you'd have a twist tie at the front so I know to keep it and uh, some of these shorter ones like that plants a goer you know that's got to go so twist tie on the back twist tie on the back um, it just helps you rogue your stock to keep the whole plot as clean and healthy as you possibly can my best daily of the year this year was Blight and Stella it's always been a good one I grow it nine up but you could grow it eight up and it, it doesn't fade very much and it's got good form good center good depth sensible height three and a half foot plants healthy never seen a bit of virus or anything wrong with it it's a nice one to grow uh, and I remember when when I, I said to Les I said you sent me a cracker this time and he said what have I sent you so I said Stella Blightens. oh he said I didn't think much of that I said yeah I said but it, it, and David Hall saw it he released it and uh, the rest is history and I would say it's the one that of the on the year I would say over the years it's been Christabel that's my best one um, but this year it's been Stella Stella was the best they came late bloomed a bit late still in a good flush now it's one of the few that I could could have took to Harrogate if we'd been going but we haven't got much either of us so we're not going this is the full bed of uh, Casper um, they tend to be a bit smaller because we've got trees behind us and it sucks, seems to suck the moisture out of the bed. But um, there's been some good blooms, but it's hard one to get right. So I don't know if I'd grow it again, but it's a really good variety if you get it right. And some, I could get a vase of that for Harrogate now, I mean flush, but it bloomed late. It's in full flush now, but I had nothing for the early shows of Essex, Kent, even Surrey really. And we'll carry straight on with Red Ace. <coughs> uh, Blight and Red Ace is a very nice dahlia. Uh, I grow it about um, seven up. It's not big. You, you have to grow it four size. If you grow it more than that, you'll be a bit small. And all these blooms now are a bit small. But to get it a top whack as high as it would go, you need it seven up. Uh, it's had a habit of dropping its center a little bit this year. But it's got lovely form. I would say it's better form. Oops, another one. Um, <laughs> that can go in a bunch, it's long enough. Um, but you can see the form of the thing. It's got good depth, it's got a good centre, goes right back on the stem, which a miniature ball should, as I said before. And that's a really nice bloom. And it does, a lot of reds, like Dear Moore, Barbary Dear Moore in this one, have the odd white petal like that. And if it's just one white petal, you can easily pull it out and no one knows the difference. If you get a cluster of petals and you pull them out, you've got a hole. So that's the difference. But it has been dropping its back prematurely this year. Uh, but it's a refined, more refined perhaps than uh, the Germanders. But uh, I grow a full bed of it. And I've used it in most shows. And that's called Blight and Red Ace from Les Stothard. This is Blight and Softer Gleams. And um, it's a really good small ball. It's suddenly come bouncing into fashion uh, this year more than any other and what happened was John Cullen who, who's grown it better than anyone over a number of years I showed at a show at Abercorn Nursery 
uh, David show and I was leading after two vases and he had a vase of blight and softer gleams. He got 26 out of 30 for it and I came second. And uh, that awakened me to the fact that that was a good dahlia. And uh, it's surprisingly with a blend of colours like you've got peach and yellow that it matches up so well. I haven't got many uh, blooms out because Karma's nicked them all for the uh, bunches. But um, it's a really good form, good depth, easy to match surprisingly. And it's called Blight and Softer Gleams. And there were so many vases, weren't there, around yeah. our shows down here. And I think the north will catch on and we might see northern growing as growing it as well. But it is a surprise package because you show that to an exhibitor say, I ain't going to have that rainbow. That's what I do when I look at these colourful yeah. gamers. I'm not going to grow that. But it matches surprisingly well. Did you find For that? a 25-year-old dahlia that's now yeah, yeah, come to the... Yeah. Took a long time, <laughs> like you, a late bloomer. <laughs> and we've got another Stella here, just to uh, fill in a hole. This this is the value for money daily on the plot. It really does produce. It's called Jesudi Hercules. It's a miniature cactus, and I've I've cleaned all the plot up yesterday, and I've cut umpteen blooms off. I had them all hanging down till then because what you've got to watch with these miniature cactus is the size. I've had all the greener ways, I've had all the western, uh, westerns, uh, western varieties over the years, and I can never keep them down. But I do seem to be able to handle uh, uh, Hercules, Jasudi Hercules. And the way you do it is you stop the plant, uh, and then you let the laterals come up, you stop the brakes, which is a double stop, and then you just disbud two pair down. And that's all I do with each stem, and it does keep it within the miniature ring. All of these blooms would be miniatures, and I could get a vase even today with it. And um, it just keeps blooming and blooming off 15 plants. I've showed it at virtually every show, and it's a real good value to money for money daily. I haven't got much left of Western Harry, but it's my medium decorative of choice. This is a young bloom, and it comes right back, but there's a good centre on it and uh, in two days time it'll be in a bunch outside where all the good ones are today so <laughs> I can't show you any but I grow a bed of it every year and um, it's reliable and with someone with no covers and they want a medium deck this is the boy you want because the only thing that will hurt these is if you get hailstones and the, the hailstones hit the flat petals of a, a medium deck they split them right down the middle like a cut right down the middle of the pattern. Fortunately we haven't had that this year. Last year we had one storm and it got them for a few days. But that's Western and Harry raised by Gordon Hodgson and it's uh, my favourite one. Many people grow Mary Margaret Row as theirs uh, but um, this is easy to handle for me. Tall growing, five foot grower and it's called Western and Harry. Uh, Uncle Goldcrest had a, a indifferent year, it's the only small cactus I used. I had some reasonable vases, but um, when you come up against the northern Ch uh, Kiwi Glorias and uh, Deborah's Kiwi and that sort of thing, I think it's hard pressed with a Goldcrest. And it's very low growing, as you can see, and with no covers. Covers pulls them up about a foot, two foot on some varieties. But it done okay, and I'll probably grow it again. But um, yes, it was an average year for Oakwood Goldcrest. And we'll go on to my old favourite, and it's called uh, Polventum Cristobal, and this is a bed of Polventum Cristobal. That's the depth and the size that you want, but that's the centre you want. You know, it's proportionate to the size of the bloom. People get mixed up. What size centre should I have? It's proportionate to the size of the bloom. The bloom goes back. The petaling's okay. It's round. Um, and the centre is just right for showing. Uh, I would show that bloom today, wouldn't you? Yeah. You want the judge to see it now. You want the judge to see it now. And that is the bed. I've grown it now for 10 or 12 years, perhaps. So Watkins let me try it when he first raised it and it's been good from the start. And it's a banker uh, miniature deck for me. And it's a proper miniature deck, because you see some and you have to uh, discuss between ourselves for, for 10 minutes, is it a ball, is it a deck? You take one look at that. It's, it's a deck. deck. Miniature decks this year, 
uh, and the other two didn't work out as well. I grew, grew Barbara Deer Moore and I grew Twilight Boy and they weren't great. But these other three uh, did very well, which were Polvent and Christabel, uh, Blight and Stella and the one you're looking at, which is uh, Skelmersdale Jane. It was a bit thinner in the centre than I remember it in other years. You know, if you cut a centre like that that hasn't got a lot in it, you wouldn't get to the show. You have to cut it perhaps even bigger than that. And they would be, that would be a perfect bloom to be judged now, wouldn't it, today? Yeah. Going back, doesn't mark, that's his benefit, doesn't mark at all, Skelmer's Day is Jane. And again, I've grown it nine up uh, ever since I got it. And it's tough petaled, can take anything. And it's a real good small deck, but it did have a smaller centre. It did sort of, if you cut that now for the show tomorrow, you'd be sweating that it, you would get that in that time. Yeah. You know, that is, a, a, on this season, that has only been a day apart. So one, you've got a showable bloom, judgeable bloom, and they would deem that to be a blown centre, an open centre, and you would be penalised as a serious fault. And there are some good blooms. Um, they're getting good size now, but they were a bit on the small side earlier. But uh, there's some really nice blooms. You know, I'd now I find a vase, wouldn't I, today, if I had to. And um, it's one I'll grow again, and it's continuous on my list. Um, and they are the three that picked themselves for me on this season, Stella, Christabel, and Jane. They were my best three. And they're the ones I'll be growing next year, and I'm looking for a fourth. It could be ginger. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think uh, I think it, this is a banker for a variety. If you look at, if you think of uh, Blight Nermin, uh, and then you think of Mary's Jamanda, it's quite a big petal for a miniature, um, in my view, compared to perhaps Polvent and Cristobal. Uh, I know they're decks, but you're looking at petal size, uh, and Jane and Stella. And this is quite, of course they were dual classified at one time. This was a small ball, miniature ball. Now it is just a miniature ball. And that's a good bloom of it, isn't it? It's just mm. bleaching a bit of the back. Look at that, uh, that size. Yeah. You it, had it a lot fine. bigger than that. You yeah. Had it, you had it on the ring, didn't you? Yeah. And then it, get, it might get a bit might big a bit, bit lumpy. And the idea of the uh, rocaline over the top is to keep colour in them. And... Uh, just a piece of vocaline stapled on and um, to give it pr protection from the sun and well, we've had a bit of that in the last three weeks it's been blistering down here I know it's been hot in the north and in Scotland but we've had the last three weeks of 32 34 degrees every day um, and it does affect the blooms and the bloom quality is a bit have been a bit down uh, but I know they've had it in the north uh, hot for them, uh, but we always get it a bit more. But look how many blooms you get on a variety like this. This is, this is the only bed where I've got three rows, and I won't do it next year, I'll have just two rows. But I've got three rows, and they're 16 up, so you do the maths. It's about 38 plants, 16 up, so you've always got stacks of blooms. And... Um, it's coming to the end now, but again, I could probably find a vase if I had to. And that's the colour, and that you got this colour, didn't you? Yeah. And it's off these taller plants that I get this colour. We've got two stocks in here, and one's lower and one's higher. But that is a good bloom, isn't it, I mm. would say. You know? But it is chunky petal, isn't it? The variety. Not, yeah. Not necessarily the way I've grown it, but the variety. And that is a good bloom of it, I would say. Mm. The only larger I grew this year was a Maria called, and it, it did well. It marked up in the weather that we had, and with no covers, you do pay a penalty. You know, it's got a bit too much for me and Carmen to hike up the covers every year. So this is my second year with no covers. It worked quite well last year, but this year I think it, it, it did uh, work against me in as much that you had marking and spotting and softening of the backs of the blooms more than a normal season. <clears throat> about uh, oh, we won't put covers up again and we just have to pick varieties that uh, are suited uh, to being grown outside with no covers and Amaria called really is a bit of a tester because that's a bloom that 
you know, it's a day past its perfection, but then you look at the back and it's a week behind its perfection, you know, mm. so uh, that's what no covers does for one and it is not great and that's my excuse for failure. Uh, this is uh, Barbary Deer Mole from Barry Davis. I've grown it a few years, sometimes I grow it, sometimes I don't, but I grew it this year and um, it's been another one with the weather we've had down south where the bucks have gone prematurely. I've been cutting for karma for a bunches today and if you cut anything sort of older than that centre it, it, the back has gone in in the bunches out on the drive there so but it's a good miniature deck i grow it nine up it doesn't need covering it can be grown in the open and it does very well in the north as well so south barbary deer more this is rycroft lisa and i've always loved it i always tried to grow it well year after year but it's one of them i end up failing in one way or another it was the stems but my new best friend Ian, Ian Sutherland gave me some soluble potash and it worked and I've got a good stem on it and um, that side of it is work but it's not really big enough uh, the form is wonderful but I doubt if it will ever come out on the market I don't know uh, but there's no better form in it glorious oh, form but I don't think I'll be growing it again. I think it'll be my last year. Coming to the end of the flush. How many times have I showed it? Once, I think, in a mixed, uh, in mixed, it's two vase class. But uh, it's another one that I'll be moving on. And I'll just stick to Western and Harry. Western and Harry is a workman. You show every bloom, it doesn't mark, they match up well, you wrote five up, Western and Harry, full size. Someone said to me at Surrey, and they small this year. Uh, Western Herring, Kevin Moore's it was, and he said, are they small to Harry? I said, you look at my vase in here, it's on the ring. And he went in and it was next to his as it happened, and uh, mine were eight and three quarter inches and his were about seven inches. But you do need to push Western and Harry, it's a five up job, stripped down, and you get the results. And it can take all the weather, you can chuck at it. But this one, I don't like letting it go, but the time, and it goes back pretty well for a medium deck, just going over the top now, but uh, that is Rycroft Lisa from Phil Godsmart. This is one I've grown in numbers for the first time. It's called uh, uh, Hillcrest Charlie from Les Jackson in Carlisle. And uh, I've grown it, uh, odd plants of it in the past, but I thought I'd have a go and see if I could get it on the bench. And on the face, it is absolutely glorious. We'll go down and find a young Chris Bloom like that one uh, and there are others uh, where it's got this good form uh, that show show bench quality form uh, but the problem is it as it gets older and you would show it you would show that center wouldn't you yeah. today it hangs a bit and I showed it at the Kent show and the judge really panned me uh, for it and gave me a little lecture afterwards that you know it's not good enough for that class um, and you, if you show it younger, of course, you're going to have a heavier centre, uh, and that's got that depth. So most of the blooms you're looking at are older blooms. Let's try and find a young bloom if we can. That's about the youngest we've got, isn't it? See, that's got a, a, a well-gone centre. But even so, well, although you like two-thirds depth, this is nearly 100% depth. Um, and I'm afraid it's another one that I'll have to let go. And we counted through. I've got 24 beds of dahlias here, about 570 plants. And there are 10 beds which I never showed a bloom from, or a good bloom from. And I've got to do a bit more. I fall in love with the new ones, that's the problem. People send them to me, they're kind to send them to me, and I want to grow them. And if they've got a sniff of a chance of making it on a show bench, I'm going to go for it. But I'm shooting myself in the foot a little bit by doing it. This is a bed of Twilight Boy from Gabby Hayes. It's a beautiful dark violet miniature deck. It's on Halls of Heaven's list, but it's a beautiful colour, good form, proper miniature deck, but it has a tendency to hang a bit, and um, and, the, and then it can, uh, it can lose petal as well. So for bunches and that, I tend to cut it young before it collapses and leaves a pile of petals on the 
on the uh, on the drive but uh, it, it matches up well it's got good stems three and a half foot height a um, bit smaller than I've had it in the past I went to nine up it's probably an eight up dahlia and uh, it's a lovely colour I might not grow it again I might stick to my main three which is Skelmis Dale Jane uh, Paul Venton and St uh, Stella and try and look for a fourth um, but uh, it does let you down at shows as well we went to Surrey on uh, Sunday and um, this was dropping a bit um, Twilight Boy and so were the Deer Moor and I think it's just a peculiar season that we've had but uh, can you afford to grow daily? I think the, I had it with the, the Twilight Palms where we went for a cool se season plenty of water mm. cool section of that up to Essex really it was yeah. quite cool wasn't it yeah and then we had this silly 30 odd degrees heat and the backs were just shattering because it's just a changing temperature seems yeah. to make yeah. them react they just drop petals yeah okay uh, a bit disappointed in my own one my own sport this is pink mayor's ronda and it's really going like a rainbow you get ones with a lot of purple in you get ones that are nearly white um, it's just for 30, 36 plants I've got a whole bit of it, three rows across, uh, about 12 in each row and it's just very difficult to get a vase or even off this number of plants uh, and I did get a decent one for the National for the Dave Spencer Trophy class and um, I was pleased with that but most of the time when I've gone to cut I just can't, Carmen comes out with me and I pass them to her and really when you're trying to find blooms the same everyone is different and um, that's quite a nice mm. flower and I, I have had nice flowers but then you try and find five or six more <laughs> you know of that yeah. particular colour because what you've got there is it paling all the way down and bright pink in the middle isn't it you you look through yeah. and try and find it even off 200 blooms 300 blooms that we've got out now um, so it is not consistent enough if I'm only growing one palm, although it's mine and I love it dearly, um, I'll have to move on. And I know someone that's got very good stock of Gert the Twilight, who when I mentioned it, after looking after him for 50 years, <laughs> said to me, oh, I don't know if I can manage that. <laughs> and I'm sure I'll get I it. I might find some. I'm sure I'll get it. Finish off with Carmen's little patch. She only grows three for artists for her cut flower. And they're not necessarily show dahlias. Well, they're not show dahlias. This is uh, Caroline's Beauty. Uh, judges would consider this when it's fully open. These aren't open, they're on, uh, out in the bunches. But that's how they want to see a, 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 a water lily like that flat plane at the bottom. And once it's fully open, it's a bit too deep. So it's not suitable for showing. The same as with a um, Formby Art that we've got here from Tasmania. Um, and it, it's, a mini, it's a small deck. Uh, and it's a bicolour which is very hard to match but for actual bunches or having in your house or in your garden uh, as a colourful dahlia they are perfect and while we're just finishing off now we're just going to talk about what variety you should grow and the answer is why are you growing you're growing for a nice display in the garden maybe a few flowers in the house or do you want to go to national shows or county level shows to show your dahlias or even village shows so what do you grow i'm not going to name sort of what you should go because it depends where you live but the way to start off if you're starting off experienced exhibitors know what they can grow they know what their area will grow and they stick to it and the varieties in the main are varieties that they've grown every year but if you're just starting Go to a local show, maybe a county level show, and see what wins. And if the exhibitors live near you, that's where you start. And then over the years, certain varieties have become dominant uh, year after year. And in the giant and large sections, recently it's been Aggie White, Louis White, and Brinter of Fell. Because of their massive 14 inch size, they have really taken over. Uh, and classy varieties like Alva Supreme, uh, Sir Alf Ramsey and such have taken a, had to take a back step. And my friend here grows just three giants and that's what they are, Bryn, Aggie and Louie. Because they're massive, 
they match up well with each other because one's a seedling, Brinterfell from New Zealand, and then we've got the two sports, Louie and Aggie from Ireland, Chris White in Ireland. Um, but when you're starting out, have a look like that and don't change your varieties just because it's a new variety. Don't change it just on a whim. Uh, make sure that the new variety is up to the standard uh, that you're growing uh, previously. And really you've got dominant forces like the three giants I mentioned. You've got Kenora Challenger with a Maria called as number two in the large. Uh, we don't have many large decks uh, these days, but uh, Kenora Valentine would be the dominant force in that. You've got the medium decks where you've got Mary Margaret Rowe and Western and Harry, which would be the two there. You've got the candies, Hillcrest candy, white candy, and the moonlights, Eastwood moonlight and its sports, which dominate the medium semi cactus. These are all starting points. The same in the small cactus, Kiwi Gloria, Oakwood Grogcrest, you would start there. Small decks, it would be the dominant force, which is the Dianes, Winon Diane, Cream Diane, Tracy Diane, Ruskin Diane, and they all grow well for most people. Uh, so you would stick with that. In the miniatures, the dominant forces are the three that I grow, Pulventa Cristobal, Brighton Stella, and Skelmersdale Jane. You can look at others, try them. Uh, and in the uh, miniature ball, you've got uh, Mary's Jamanda, Jamanda, uh, and Dave's Choice is probably a third choice. And then down in the palms, you've got things like Gertler Twilight, Hallmark, Willow's Violet, which are the dominant forces there. And if you were starting up, you probably had a collection like that. And then if you want to treat yourself, you'd look at Halls of Heavens or someone's catalogue and try and pick out a new one. But when you think of the age of these bankers, probably 15 years for Challenger, 30 years for Eastwood Moonlight, uh, 15, 20 years since Morris White uh, showed Har uh, Harrogate his win on dying for the first time. Um, they're all old dahlias, they're all proven forces. The new ones are not proven forces, they're a gamble. So start with the bankers and then work your way down. Any thoughts on what I've just said? I wouldn't disagree with it. That's what I had to do this year coming back is look at what was consistent probably over the last two years where we had one of the hottest years we ever had. Yeah. The year before that was cool and wet. Yeah. What performed in both years is where I started with like softer gleams, the Mary's Jamanda, Diane's, I Oakwood. Who gave you all your I don't know. I don't know. But someone I, who you were refusing to give girl the toilet <laughs> to, I suppose. But I, but I hope they uh, learn to grow them as well as I did. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the video. We've had our usual little chitter chatter, which we have between ourselves normally anyway, but this time it's on video. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.